Hello, everyone. Uh, it is a great pleasure to introduce you to our module on T2 inflammation. My name is Marek Jutel. I am the president of the European Academy of Allergy and Criminology. And uh, beside me is uh, Professor Joanna Agace from Brasov, Romania, who is the immediate past president of the European Academy of Allergology and Criminology. So, first, let me explain what is the purpose of our very important platform, of our major tool of communication knowledge dissemination, which we call the EACI Knowledge Hub. So, first of all, we want to help the healthcare professionals and researchers with the best practices and tools to facilitate standardized high quality care in allergy and asthma. But we also would like to go a little bit broader and embrace the patients and help them to understand the illness and guide and finding the best way to handle the disease. But we also involve relevant stakeholders like healthcare policymakers, regulators, competent authorities, industry, charities, and with a common goal to achieve harmonization of efforts to make better life of our patients. So, Joanna, please tell us a little bit more about how this T2 module was developed and how it can be utilized by our users. Well, first of all, Marek, thank you for the kind introduction. I would say that we expand a little bit on the educational purpose of FIACI. Uh, we started some time ago with this uh, goal of implementing what we called first purposeful education. Can you uh, let us know what do we mean by that? Because this uh, educational model that we are implementing is uh, fitting perfectly this model of purposeful education. So, yes, this purposeful education seems to be a simple, but it is not as simple as it sounds. Uh, there are a lot of objectives here. The teachers themselves should have sense of their own most important goals and understand of how they make meaning uh, of them. They should have a vision that can, that can provide inspiration and motivation. The teachers should sense that they are making a positive difference in the lives of their students. And that's what we would like to achieve with these new tools and with, this, with our most modern mo modules that we, entwickle and deliver, that we develop and deliver to you. So let us understand that any given matter can represent many different meanings, but there is no matter without meaning and no meaning without a matter. So finally, the individual growth of a student is fostered and the potential for purpose development is promoted. Thank you, Marek. So I think that these are very nice. Uh, uh, this is a very nice frame for developing uh, the Knowledge Hub, which is the new educational platform of EACI. Can you tell us a little bit more in depth about its structure? Yes, this is uh, quite a complicated structure, uh, as it was developed to simplify uh, what we deliver and bring together all our existing platforms. So at the first glance, it is complicated, but once you start to utilize it, you will see that it's a very simple and very useful and easy to use tool. So this Knowledge Hub is to offer a high level access to expertise in allergy and asthma uh, by providing specialized events or specific on specific allergy and asthma topics that connect doctors, researchers, uh, patients, and also other stakeholders. Uh, so what are the services that we provide? Please move a little bit more to make it visible. So this is networking, advocacy, education, scientific research, and support for our members. So we put the major office, uh, the, the major emphasis on networking. We provide huge opportunities, huge possibilities for networking and socializing and connecting all the stakeholders. Then uh, advocacy, of course, we will use the content 
and this networking possibilities, and idea exchange and development of new approaches for uh, advocacy reasons. And we will embrace a lot of stakeholders, including the politicians of the European Union. Uh, this is also a very important uh, tool for education. We will embrace here the complete e-learning pl platform with a complete curriculum for people in training, undergraduate training, uh, postgraduate training, and also provide for the established researchers and clinicians the most updated knowledge. Scientific research, uh, this will be covered by media library that will be uh, easily accessible through the Knowledge Hub. And of course, this will facilitate um, development of new ideas, exchange of data, and uh, foster uh, publication of uh, uh, relevant papers. And of course, support of our membership, which is by my Yaki platform already. So this will also be incorporated into Knowledge Hub. But we believe that through this networking, constant access, um, forming of uh, discussion groups, meeting the experts, our members will be much, much better served. And next one. So now you see this a little bit complicated structure as it is now but that we have a number of different platforms that are accessed either uh, directly or through our website. And Knowledge Hub will integrate all these tools uh, and make it a very easy, accessible uh, platform. Uh, as I said, please move a little bit forward. This will be also integrated with our website and you can access either through the Knowledge Hub or through the website. And with this, you will have one landing platform to uh, reach to all our resources. So this is not only e-learning, but you can also uh, get information if you prepare to our knowledge exam. I mentioned the media library. There are also a lot of resource centers like COVID-19, our newsfeed from a newsletter. And then you can also access to uh, different activity, different groups that work together, like uh, ROC Committee and the European Research Network, European Allergy Journal Network, etc. It is all developing, and uh, we have quite a lot of success in, in, in development of these tools. But Knowledge Hub will foster and make it much easier, and the development of all these uh, domains will be uh, much, much sped up in the future. So this is in brief about the Knowledge Hub. So I also would like to invite you to explore the Knowledge Hub. You will see how useful and how fantastic tool we have created. So Jana, maybe we can now uh, enter into more details on this uh, particular module, the T2 module. So please present us with uh, uh, the aims and briefly the content that is provided within this module. Thank you, Marek. So um, we thought that we will start with the T2 inflammation because this is extremely uh, important for our specialty, the T2 inflammation, meaning the common trunk of many diseases that an allergist is seeing and treating. The interactive, as you have heard, is to offer an interactive. This is very important for us to listen to our uh, learners, uh, learning and blended resource, because we will also have some uh, hands-on training, aiming to improve the diagnosis and the management of T2 disease, as it is a long-term condition starting in childhood and evolving into adulthood. The target will be healthcare professionals who treat children or adults, both at the specialist level, which we call the advanced level, and the non-specialist, which is the basic level. Key outcomes will be to develop knowledge and confidence in caring for patients, with improving the quality of care that the patients receive, but also by the interactions between healthcare professionals to agree on a standardized pathway for P2 management, starting from the primary care referral to specialized setting, and then support research in the field of P2 disease because there are many unknowns in the field. 
course, we will measure what we are going to do through different uh, key performance indicators, like the number of correct T2 diagnosis and management uh, cases, uh, both in primary care and in specialized heading. Here we have our registry that is currently collecting data and also uh, in a survey. And of course, the number of research networks and projects that we hope that it will be generated by the IT Knowledge Hub. Uh, we start with the uh, module one today, which is the, looking at the um, pathogenesis and clinical phenotypes associated with T2 inflammation. And what we will learn from uh, the module that will follow is how to define and understand the pathogenesis, the biomarkers, and the visible properties, which we call phenotypes. Of course, we start with the, uh, so as we said, we will address both specialized care and the primary care and connected specialties. Then uh, we will follow in the second module, the major clinical phenotypes and their associations, looking at tools and techniques that should be used and relevance for clinical practice. Here, besides the online lectures, we plan to have hands-on training that will be organized for the specialized settings for the advanced level only. Then the next um, module will review the clinical trial data and the real world evidence on the safety and efficacy of the existing targeted therapies. Uh, next module will look at the practical management of T2 major clinical phenotypes and <clears throat> looking again at a blend between online lectures and relevant case studies. And the last module, we we'll look at the effective communication with the patient and the family in addressing these diseases. Now, what we are inviting you to uh, uh, immediately access is the submodule, which is uh, focusing on uh, submodule one on, for specialized care. And we have here prepared for you six key talks, um, which are delivered by key opinion leaders in the field. So the first one is looking at the T2 mechanisms the, uh, by Chesney Actis, then T2 biomarkers by Professor Manali Mutiarchi. Then we look at the clinical phenotypes in four different locations. So the skin, Emma gutmann yaski from uh, Mount Sinai, then lung, Jonathan Coran, then uh, gastrointestinal tract, uh, Stanford, uh, Karin Ado from Stanford University, upper airways, Whitney Stevens uh, from Northwestern, and uh, the pediatric aspects with uh, James Kern from Wisconsin. How it will look, the structure of the module, you will uh, be able to start with a three minute lecture, um, which uh, includes two, three relevant case studies because we want to keep the practical aspect of the module. Then you will be able to have a live Q&A question with each speaker part of this module. And at the end, because again, we are measuring what we are doing, you will have the CME uh, test activity. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, close and I hope that you will enjoy our T2 module and uh, it's uh, modules to follow. It's just the first one. So we just wanted to get your glimpse of um, what the act is preparing in the next months. Uh, Marek, over to you. Yeah, Anna, thank you very much, Anna, for this uh, presentation. And I do believe that you managed to make the people hungry for the knowledge and uh, which is provided in this uh, module. So uh, uh, please enjoy uh, and uh, join us to this module and uh, also in the future for the other that will be developed and provided as soon as possible. Thank you. <laughs>